Hey guys, Leslie here, and today I want to talk about root causes of gray hair and how you can find out what yours is. The uh, question I get most frequently is, what pill should I take to fix my gray hair? And any of you who have spent any time in my forums know that I spend a lot of time questioning people, asking them, when their gray hair started to happen? Was there a stressful event? Some kind of emotional, physical trauma? Did their diet change? Um, I'm always trying to act a bit like a detective to help them figure out what the root cause was so we can go after that specific cause. Because to be honest, as you know from my videos, there is no single cause of gray hair. There are many different causes of gray hair. Some of us may have only one of them, others may have multiple. So uh, if you'd like to take a quiz, uh, a gray hair detective quiz that I'm putting together to help you find your root cause, please sign up to my newsletter. I'll be announcing the link to that gray hair detective quiz. Equally, you will get the first heads up on the gray hair reversal book that I've written and that will be sent out to you for free. So let's talk now about all the different reasons for gray hair. As you know, whenever someone says, what should I do to find out what my root cause is? I always say, please get lab work. That means blood test, maybe urine test, maybe stool and saliva test. All of those will give you a more complete picture of your internal health. I know that we're always looking at the external and thinking, oh, can I put amla juice or indigo dye or some kind of chemical hair dye on in order to cover this up? But look, this grows from the inside out. That means that the bleaching also comes from the inside out. We already have covered this in other videos. We know it's due to the hydrogen peroxide, among other factors. So we need to really address the causes on the inside. So those tests that I always suggest include looking for vitamin, mineral, and hormonal deficiencies, as well as antioxidant deficiencies. Uh, so let's start with vitamin deficiencies or imbalances. The ones that are most implicated in gray hair are the B vitamins. In particular, it would be B5, which is pantothenic acid, B6, B9, and B12. If you are undergoing a lot of stress, those B vitamins tend to be depleted across the board. If you are drinking a lot of alcohol, which creates a lot of oxidative stress in the body and is a big depleter of glutathione in the liver, you're probably going to be depleting benfotiamine, which is vitamin B1. So when you go to your doctor and you want to get uh, your your vitamin panels checked, definitely look at the B vitamins. Another vitamin that is very important for overall health and immunity, but also hair health, is vitamin D3. So there are some studies which implicate low vitamin D3 in gray hair. And uh, for those of us who have slightly darker skin pigmentation like I do, um, and live in a very northern climate, as I also do, we need a different spectrum of light, uh, something that is closer to what our ancestors would have been getting on their skin in order to synthesize vitamin D3 from sunlight. So do bear that in mind, do have that checked out because it's also important for brain health as well. In addition to our vitamins, we need to think about our minerals. And there are a lot of minerals that we can be deficient in that can lead to gray hair, uh, early premature gray hair, as well as gray hair later in life. Uh, the ones I always ask to check for are iron, magnesium, zinc, copper, and selenium. So let's talk about iron first. Iron is in our blood. It's what is needed to make hemoglobin and you need hemoglobin in order to carry oxygen all around your body. So it's very important if we don't have enough oxygen, I uh, sorry, if we don't have enough iron, <clears throat> we can get uh, anemia. And in particular, women are more prone to have an iron deficiency. But it's not just 
uh, women who have a monthly menstrual cycle that can be low in iron. It can be the same for uh, vegetarians and vegans who might not be getting enough heme iron in their diet. Heme iron is iron that has already been made bioavailable for the body. So most vegans and vegetarians get what is called non-heme iron. So that is from plant sources and the body has got to turn that into the bioavailable heme iron, um, which you can only get from meat sources. You don't need a lot. The richest source is going to be liver. I have recommended liver capsules as something to try or run by your doctor or nutritionist uh, to see if that might be a solution for those of you who are vegetarians. And I know this is a sensitive topic because many people are vegan or vegetarian for religious reasons. Um, but that is something worth thinking about. Um, in addition, iron can be depleted because of H. pylori infections. So I have two other videos where I talk about H. pylori. 50% uh, of the global population has H. pylori present in their gut at any one time. And when it begins to grow out of control, it lives on iron from our body. It literally uh, adheres to the side of the gut. It burrows into the side of the gut um, it creates a biofilm over itself to protect itself, and then it will literally suck the iron out of the side of the gut wall. Uh, it's not a pretty picture, but that is another reason why someone might be deficient in iron. The next mineral that I would love you to have tested is magnesium. Huge percentages of the population all over the world are deficient in magnesium. In the United States, the number varies between 50 to 70% of the population is deficient in it. And if you don't have enough, it can impact things like good sleep. But it's also needed to help produce glutathione, which is the body's master antioxidant. I won't go into glutathione here because I talk about it in a lot of my other videos, but that's a reason that magnesium is quite important. The other three minerals that I've mentioned, which are zinc, copper, and selenium, these three are actually needed for optimum thyroid health. In order for the body to make thyroid hormones, and for those of you who don't know, the thyroid is a gland, a butterfly-shaped gland that is just here, we need, um, we need those three minerals to help us make thyroid hormone. And low thyroid hormone has been implicated in both hair loss and gray hair. Um, the flip side is that you can have too much of those hormones in which case you get hyperthyroidism, and that's where uh, your metabolism is very, very fast. You might get a lot of palpitations and you might lose weight very, very quickly. Uh, in that case, what happens is that you lose a lot of hair, but the grain doesn't seem to come with it. Maybe one of the reasons why is because the second mineral in that trinity, which is copper, is needed for melanin and the pigment really needs copper um, for production. So selenium is a very, um, it's a trace mineral. I would say it is less important than, uh, than zinc and copper for pigmentation. However, it is very important for thyroid health and you can get enough selenium simply by eating three Brazil nuts a day. Just make sure they haven't gone rancid, store them in your fridge. All right, so those would be the minerals that you would wanna check for in a blood test. Um, the other deficiencies that you should look for would be antioxidants. So one of the best antioxidants that we can test for would be glutathione. Now there are three big antioxidants, catalase, superoxide dismutase, and glutathione but the easiest one to test for is going to test for and supplement with is going to be glutathione. So uh, you can get a, a blood plasma test for that. Uh, there's also a company called Spectrocil, which Eric Ostovani told me about, and that is one where they actually check the levels of glutathione in your cells. And that is probably the gold standard for test. Um, so, Glutathione, as we know from my other videos, 
is really necessary to take the hydrogen peroxide in our bodies that we produce as part of the stress response and convert it into harmless water. The next thing to, to think about in terms of gray hair would be hormonal imbalances. So we really do want to check our thyroid hormones. I've already alluded to that and uh, I've shown in other videos a case study out of India where two patients, two, two thyroid patients were treated for their thyroid uh, problems and their hair spontaneously repigmented. That is a possible solution in and of itself. So do look there. And of course, it's very important to make sure that your sex hormones are in balance. So if female sex hormones are not in balance, that can lead to uh, period cramps, premenopausal, not premenopausal, uh, premenstrual cramps, and it can lead to heavier bleeds. Um, in terms of the changes that happen during menopause, we want to really stay on top of our hormones before menopause, during menopause, and after menopause, because not only does it have a lot to do with our how happy we are and how good we feel about ourselves, but it will have an impact on the quality of our hair, skin, and nails. So do have that checked out as well. Um, finally, it's very important to check on infections. Do we have any chronic infections? And those would be things like H. pylori and Candida albicans. Both of those, um, one is bacterial. H. pylori is the bacteria that causes ulcers. Candida is a fungi. Both of these, are ones that will inhibit the absorption of nutrients in the body. And that is a problem because you might think, oh, all I have to do is supplement with vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, and it's all going to be fine. Except, you know, what happens if you've got leaky gut uh, or, um, you know, you've got candida and H. pylori and your gut is simply not able to absorb this. So you're just going to have expensive pee, which is not actually helpful, right? We want to make sure that all of those nutrients stay inside us and uh, have some kind of benefit. So very important to check if you've got a current chronic infection. The other thing, a lot of people say that they have got their gray hair after they had a bout of typhoid fever or some other infection. And in fact, I've looked this up, you can get gray hair after a serious infection like streptococcus. Um, many of us have had strep throat in high school and or college. I, I, in the US, it's known as the sort of kissing disease. And that the reason that we could get gray hair from that is that our body is producing a lot of hydrogen peroxide in order to fight the infection. And the body then takes from the liver glutathione to neutralize the hydrogen peroxide. So you might find that after you have had one of the infect these infections, one of the best things you could do would be to eat something like sulforaphane, which you get in broccoli sprouts and broccoli, cauliflower, the cruciferous vegetables, cabbage, bok choy, mustard greens, and top up your glutathione so that you can help rebuild the liver's stores. Um, so I've gone through quite a lot of reasons there for why we could get gray hair. The final one I want to talk about is mitochondrial uh, dysfunction. And uh, I've spoken about autophagy before, which is the body's cellular renewal and recycling process. And when that happens, and we can induce it through fasting or through uh, high intensity interval training, through really good sleep, um, or through going into ketosis, autophagy helps get rid of the uh, damaged proteins and organelles in our cells and allows us to bring out new ones. So I showed you this, uh, you know, this, this picture before where we basically have the damaged, um, damaged organelles and proteins and other cellular matter uh, that needs to actually be gotten rid of. 
And when that happens, everything works fine. Our bodies actually function very well. Uh, however, if we do not get rid of dysfunctioning um, proteins and cellular material, and in particular mitochondria, we go from this to this. So this is a mouse before um, he was subjected to some mitochondrial damage. This is the mouse after mitochondrial damage, and you can see that he looks pretty gray and wrinkly. And this is the mouse after that mitochondrial um, damage was allowed to be cleaned up. So basically, uh, they administered doxycycline to this mouse. Uh, when they stopped administering it, the mouse was able to recover and you can see reversed all of the, um, the symptoms of aging there. So why is that, why is that interesting? Well, because actually I found this really great journal article from the editor of, the editor-in-chief of the Integrative Medicine Journal. Uh, his name is Joe Pizzorno, and this was the article that he wrote. And he was just wanting to point out that we get mitochondrial damage from quite a lot of things. And he wanted to put together a table showing us how mitochondrial damage manifested in the body. And I was pretty blown away by the fact that he said that in 99% of the cases, gray hair is an outcome. So that is, um, that's pretty astonishing. So we can, uh, we can reverse mitochondrial damage just the way this mouse did by inducing autophagy. And we can induce autophagy by, uh, by again, fasting, you can do uh, window fasting, which is where you fast for say 18 hours a day and you eat within six hours. You can do OMAD, which is one meal a day fasting, where you just, you literally have just one meal a day and you are fasting for the other 23. Uh, you can do circadian fasting, which Sachin Panda at the Salk Institute in La Jolla, California advocates, which is just eating when the sun is up um, you can also have a ketogenic diet, stay in ketosis, and you will induce autophagy. Uh, there are autophagy mimetics or uh, fasting mimetics. These are things like rapamycin. Um, to a certain extent, resveratrol does this. The only thing is that it seems you need to take a ton of resveratrol to make this work. Spermidine is another way to induce autophagy. Um, so those are all things that you can do to repair the mitochondrial damage you might have that could be, according to this, to this chart from Joe Pizzorno, that could be causing gray hair. So I hope that this video has saved you some time um, because there are quite a few that I've done now. If you wanna take a deeper dive into a particular topic, Say you think that you might have stomach ulcers, which means, uh, and, and that's why you've got gray hair, then you would wanna look at the H. pylori set of videos. If you think that it's due to heavy periods, then you might want to look at the ones around uh, replenishing iron. So that would be something around molasses. Um, I hope that this has been a useful video for you to watch. Thank you guys so much for all the questions and comments you have. And I thought I knew a lot about gray hair before I started this series of videos, but boy, do I know a lot about gray hair and it's many, many different causes. So I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget if you want to uh, be first in line to try out that gray hair root cause detective quiz, then please sign up for the newsletter in the link below. Equally, you'll get first dibs on my new ebook on how to reverse gray hair. Thanks so much, bye.